Hello and welcome to this OKD working group uh, briefing on deploying OKD4 on Azure brought to you by um, Joseph Meyer, who's been working with um, the working group testing on one of the many platforms. And he's gonna walk us through today his um, lessons learned deploying um, the OKD4 beta release now on Azure. So Joseph, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and take us on a tour. Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph Meyer. I'm a cloud architect at uh, Rodi and Schwartz in Munich, Germany. Um, my company is rather old. It's uh, uh, founded in 1933 and it's uh, famous. Al um, almost every physician or electronics engineer should know it because we are one of the leaders in making measurement equipment oscilloscopes, signal analyzers, spectrum analyzers, signal generators. We also make uh, TV transmitters where we are market leader. Um, it could be that also in, in Canada, your TV comes from our transmitters. We also make um, body scanners. Um, maybe you have seen one on in an airport. We also do lots of RF high frequency measurement and generation. Uh, equipment that's that's what we do and uh, my job uh, since two years uh, almost three years I'm working in a team which uh, is uh, yeah working uh, with uh, digital transformation at Rodian Schwartz and our uh, job is to build the, how it how we call it Rodian Schwartz cloud which is uh, based also on uh, OKD or OpenShift. Um, so we are um, responsible for yeah, making a great platform for our developers. And we are working with OKD since version three. I don't remember exactly when we started, um, but um, the last version came out in uh, the end of the year uh, 2018. And since then, um, we are eagerly waiting for OKD4. Why do we wait eagerly for that? Because, um, yeah, we have more and more applications which require a more modern Kubernetes version. As you know, in version 3.11 is the last um, version in the, the version 3. Um, um, yeah, uh, line of uh, software uh, of OKD. Um, it's uh, Kubernetes uh, 1.11. And uh, yes, OKD 4 is uh, starting with 1.17, as far as I know. And that's what a lot of uh, applications require now that we have modern uh, Kubernetes version. What we also like are the great ops features of OKD 4. Uh, with the automatic updates, um, not only um, for OKD, but also the underlying OS. Uh, we love that a lot because currently we have lots of work in uh, yeah, patching hosts. Um, sometimes uh, things don't work as expected, yes, and you have lots of troubleshooting. Everything was fine for, for, for its time on OKD 3, but um, yeah, OKD 4 is is more advanced and we want to have it. Also the great integration of tools like Monitoring Operator Hub and Tekton and many much more uh, is very good. The web UI, uh, I'm a totally fanboy of that because I think it looks fantastic and it's great not only for beginners but also for experienced Kubernetes developers find things very fast, um, everything looks yeah like it was designed for kubernetes it's uh, i think the best web ui uh, nowadays for kubernetes in the world and also say your roadmap is well, uh, very promising the last time i saw a, a powerpoint presentation with more than 100 slides um, filled uh, with nice cool features which are coming the next uh, releases and yeah that's why we 
like to um, jump onto OKD4, and that's also the reason why I'm uh, very engaged in getting that, because I like to see it in my company. Um, we have uh, two versions, well, locations where we use OpenShift or OKD. Uh, this is uh, at Rudy and Schwarz on-premises in Munich and also on Azure. Um, we do some kind of hybrid approach. It means uh, we build software on-premises and um, deploy it on the in the public cloud. Um, that's uh, why I'm working on uh, the vSphere version of OKD4 and also on the Azure version. The Azure version is uh, kind of special uh, because yeah, it was it was hard to get it uh, running uh, because yeah, um, there were several uh, yeah milestones which had to get achieved. First one was um, the first problem was that uh, there was no um, Fedora Core OS version which worked out of the box on Azure. There is a, an, well, I have to say there was a network bug, um, which required a reboot, um, sometimes even more on the first boot, um, before the, uh, the virtual machine, uh, got an internet connection. Um, I think not only Azure is affected by that, but, uh, yeah, it was my problem. And I, at first, I, uh, yeah, I rebooted every VM. Um, I had no idea if the uh, OpenShift control, the Kubernetes control plan was still running. It was not, it was not ideal. But since a few days, um, there is a test version of Fedora Core is available where this bug seems to be fixed. I tried it, tried it out several times uh, to deploy uh, VMs with Fedora Core and uh, it worked every time. So this uh, problem seems to be fixed. Um, I'm very interested to get it uh, in a released version soon. The second point, um, Azure is that the Vidora Core OS image is still not available on the Azure marketplace. And uh, normally if you spawn a VM on Azure, you, if it is Ubuntu or CentOS, uh, you can uh, use images which are maintained by third parties on the Azure marketplace. Very easy to get that. Uh, in the case of Fedora Core OS, because it's rather new, um, there is no image available in the marketplace. Uh, and the problem was how to get it in a, in an Azure resource group because the installer uh, tries to download an image from the internet, uh, sorry, uh, tries to download a VHD file from the internet, um, extracts it and uploads it again to Azure. Uh, in my case, it was, uh, yeah, I have my internet uh, connection here at home, where I do the most work um, on OKD. Uh, is very slow. I have uh, download rates of five giga, uh, uh, five gigabyte, would be nice, five megabyte per second. Upload rate is far less, and it means if I use the installer uh, without modifications, then uh, it timed out very uh, almost always after half an hour, so I wasn't able to uh, use it. And um, what it made what made it also complex is uh, that the Fedora Core image uh, a few weeks ago had to be modified. So there were uh, uh, modifications necessary with Quemu, um, but also this has fixed. Uh, Christian told me today uh, that it uh, should be fixed uh, since a few weeks. I was surprised about that uh, because, yeah, I, I made a workaround uh, with lots of love and a long weekend uh, to get around that. But I think it's it's still necessary because I tried today to deploy OKD on Azure without modifications with the installer uh, from GitHub, and it didn't work. Uh, maybe I can can uh, show Christian later what what the problem is. So yes, I made a workaround for the 
all these problems here. Um, because I wanted to test OKD on Azure and I don't I wanted lots of uh, to do lots of manual uh, interaction. Um, all uh, what I want to show you in the next three slides is not necessary anymore if Bitwater Core is available on the Azure marketplace. That's important to say. Uh, this uh, yeah modification from mine will never get it to uh, master in the installer. It's just if you want to try out OKD on Azure. Yeah, here is a little um, picture um, to uh, explain what uh, situation we have. If Fedora Core S would be on the Azure marketplace, you could create uh, OKD only by calling this command OpenShift install create cluster. Um, because we don't have it now on the marketplace, um, I made a, yes, a Vadim called it a, a hacky workaround. It is a work, hacky workaround. I, I'll be honest uh, with that, but it helped me, helped me a lot. Um, what does this workaround do? It creates a helper VM on Azure um, through the installer. Uh, this helper VM downloads the Fedora Core OS VHD file, extracts it, and uploads it to the storage account in Azure. Um, I use uh, Terraform, which is included in the OpenShift installer to do that. And my assumption was that the download and upload is much faster if I do it in a virtual machine, which is already on Azure. And that is also the case. Um, for that, I had to modify the installer. Yes, there were. I, I also thought about about different strategies to do to achieve the goal. I also thought that I could manually upload um, the extracted image to a Azure blob storage. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but the problem is still there that the upload is very slow uh, in my location here. So uh, yeah, I, I modified the installer and. Uh, that's uh, what I want to show in the next three slides. Um, the core commands which are necessary to run in this helper VM, the list uh, is very short because I removed all the QEMO stuff um, from that. In principle, the script um, runs on the helper VM. I download um, uh, a set copy, it's a tool from Microsoft for Azure, where you can upload um, software to the um, Azure container blob storage. I uh, download the FCOS, the compressed FCOS uh, VHD file. I extract it and I upload it with Azure copy to a, to a blob storage. Yeah, and on Azure, I get uh, wonderful upload rates. It only takes minute, um, I think, um, to do these tasks. Here at home, I never got it running. It, it runs forever. At first, you have to install Go somewhere. Um, I think this is nothing special. The next, uh, don't be uh, frightened by the list here. It's also nothing very special. Uh, you have to clone the OpenShift installer, uh, check out the FCOS branch. Then uh, yesterday, no, it's it's uh, still there is a, a wrong release uh, image addressed in the installer. Uh, I think Vadim made uh, a commit for that, but it hasn't landed. Um, so I have to replace the release 4.5 by 4.4. But I think uh, maybe tomorrow this is not necessary anymore. Then uh, I cherry pick three commits from my repository where I've made the, uh, the changes for the installer. You build it and you copy it somewhere where you have access to. I copied the OpenShift installer to user slash bin. That's Everything about the hack, I think, uh, yeah, uh, this here um, should be uh, very common. At first, uh, you have to create a service principle 
on Azure. There is a very good documentation about that in the OpenShift documentation. I have uh, pasted the link to the slides. Um, this is very important. A service principle is something like a, a machine service account, uh, which has uh, some airwork on it, uh, which allows the OpenShift installer to create resources on Azure. Um, you have to do this first. You get also an application ID, a secret. You need your tenant ID and your subscription ID. This is a, um, Azure terms. Everything uh, used to Azure should know them. And um, you will need them later. The next step is that you have to uh, generate a SSH uh, key pair with SSH uh, key again. Uh, afterwards, I create an OpenShift with OpenShift install, create install config, I create a config file, which is called install config.yaml. Um, I create this um, before because I like to save it for later usage, so I don't have um, to ask all the questions the in installer asks me for every time. So I uh, copy the install config away because that's uh, some Installer weirdness, I never understood why he does that. It deletes, it deletes uh, the install config YAML. Um, why I don't know. It does delete it. Um, that's why I save it away and copy it back later if I do the next test. What's also important before we install the cluster is that you have to set an environment variable which overrides the uh, default uh, Fedora Core S OS image with the uh, one the Fedora uh, Core S team has uh, offered a few days ago, uh, which contains the Azure network. Uh, yeah, uh, fix. Um, you have to use that. Um, if you don't use it, AVMs won't come up, and uh, you would have to restart CVMs uh, a few times. I mean every VM, not only the bootstrap VM. So with all these preparations, um, yeah, you can create a cluster. This should be um, very, yeah, you, you should know this command. Um, it takes around 10 minutes. Um, at first, sorry, at first, um, the installer will create this uh, VHD helper VM. I, I told about uh, told you about that before, and, and a few minutes later, um, there will be uh, the VHD file with eight gigabyte will be in the storage account in Azure, and after that, the installer proceeds as usual. It creates an image, an Azure VHD, an Azure sorry, an Azure VM image out of this VHD file, and all the VMs are created. And after around 10 minutes, the bootstrap VM should start. After the master VMs show up in the Azure portal, you can start watching your OKD4 cluster coming to life uh, by using OC uh, CLI. And I think it's very nice that the installer creates uh, all the resources completely automatic. So you don't have to do anything uh, manually. Normally, if everything works, um, yeah. And uh, after, I think, half an hour normally, you have your cluster and can start working with it. That's very important. This is uh, uh, why uh, I wrote this uh, modification in the installer for. It should look like this. In the end, there is a, an FCOS VHD file in uh, Azure. Uh, Blob storage container. Um, I always had to use um, the blob type page blob. Without that, um, Azure complains that uh, for images it needs page blob, not block blob. I saw in the sources that uh, the, um, the uh, FCOS branch and also the master branch have uh, block blob in the source code, I don't understand why it works um, for for the uh, uh, Red Hat CoreOS uh, version of OpenStift OpenShift installer. 
but I always had to uh, add the page blob uh, type in uh, Terraform code. Maybe maybe I misunderstand something, yeah, but for me it was possible. It was uh, required. So if you want to watch the uh, installation, uh, you have to get the OC CLI tool for version 4 of OKD. It's very important. Don't use the old um, OC command. If you only want to see uh, ports or CSRs, visit also the old version would work. But if you uh, want to get upgrades uh, for your cluster, for your running cluster, the version 3 CLI, uh, the OC wouldn't work. So I get it here for OKD4. I untar it uh, and then I set an environment variable um, cube config to, uh, to the content of a file which uh, the OpenShift installer created. Uh, as it uh, creates a cluster, it's in the auth cube config uh, file. Uh, that's important that uh, OC can get a connection to the cluster because cube config uh, or all the certificates and the, uh, the cluster location, uh, the domain name is also included. Uh, what I normally do afterwards is uh, to do a watch. Uh, so I see uh, all pods in all namespaces each second. That helps me in seeing uh, if there are any problems if uh, pods don't come up or restart. And normally, uh, I afterwards I yeah if I have the situation I look in the logs, the pods, and if if it looks uh, strange, then I open a ticket. The last um, few yeah days weeks um, that didn't happen. Everything was running um, as expected. Um, yes, but you can, you should also uh, have a look on that. If the pods in the namespace OpenShift machine API are ready, normally there should uh, be created uh, three worker VMs in Azure. Um, and after a while, say uh, the CSRs for them are generated and a few seconds later, normally they are joined the, to the cluster. And if that happens, you're almost done with everything. Um, problem is, uh, it's a little spoiler, that since, <laughs> since uh, yeah, that sometimes um, the VMs come up in Azure, but they don't do anything. Yeah, that happened to me uh, today two times that there were uh, two worker VMs joining the cluster. The third one didn't join the cluster. Um, I was able to SSH into them. Um, I saw that they have an internet connection, but uh, pseudo Podman images didn't show any images. And it, uh, yeah, also the, the journal, the system, uh, the, the journal CTL didn't show anything. Any, uh, didn't show any uh, great activities. Yeah, it was idling around. I don't understand where it comes from. Maybe it's a new effect. Um, we have to see um, in the live team or if it uh, still happens again. Yeah, and afterwards, uh, after around uh, half an hour, you should be able to see uh, the web UI. Here is a screenshot from a cluster I made two uh, days ago. Um, and also, uh, yeah, I can show that. Maybe I can show that before we go into a live action. I will switch the presentation to my browser. Here it is. Okay, here yeah, something has degraded already. I think it's uh, the samples operator. And uh, here we are on Azure. Yeah, uh, you can see it inside us. No, it's that's our our domain name. And uh, if I go into the settings, I see that I'm on this version. It's from two days ago. I think I think it's the maybe it's the beta version. I, I'm not sure. And here we have a degraded samples operator. That happens from time to time after an update that uh, something is degraded. I don't know exactly what I can do against it. If it is normal because upgrades 
uh, as far as I know, are not supported at the moment um, because the tests um, for upgrades have uh, recently begun a few days ago. You can see it on the release page for for, for OKD for Origin. I love this uh, visualization here, and uh, yeah, that's uh, I think that is uh, the reason why upgrades sometimes are working, sometimes not. Um, but uh, yeah, normally the first installation always works and everything is green. So said, this should be a proof that um, uh, OKD can run. I also deployed Argo CD as a test. Everything is running. Argo CD, here is it. We use Argo CD and GitOps for configuration of the cluster and also for uh, configuration and uh, automatic deployments of our applications. Uh, maybe maybe I will blog about that because we have had a few nice finding of, about it. Okay, now I would uh, like to try to create an, an Azure cluster. It will take a little bit of time. Uh, I will go through the slides in parallel so we don't lose too much time. I open an, an Azure Cloud Shell here. Why um, do I have to do that? Because in my company port, uh, the SSH port is blocked by the firewall. And uh, my modification of the OpenShift installer um, runs a script um, with SSH. Yeah, and it does not work from uh, our on-premises. Uh, that's why I'm here in the uh, public cloud. I will SSH in a Ubuntu VM I prepared before. I don't uh, want to show how I built the installer. The, uh, the instructions and the presentation work. I have tried it several times. You can try it on your own if you like. I will go in a folder. Here is the OC tool already downloaded. Um, and now, yeah, I know I already compiled the OpenShift installer with my modifications. I check if okay, it is not here. I will get my uh, environment variable. Come on, my environment variable for the Fedora Core OS image. If you don't, if you forget it, uh, you will have problems later. I think I made a script for that. Uh. There it is. Environment variable with the link to Fedora CoreOS uh, with the uh, Azure DNS uh, network bug fix. Okay, so create my um, config. I have to answer a few questions. Here I am asked for a public key. So uh, it's it's useful for debugging. If you have a problem, you can uh, SSH into VMs, uh, which make trouble. So I always create them. Here I select Azure. I already was logged in before. I entered my credentials. I, I'm i pretty sure you, you uh, know what to enter here. You have to enter the uh, service principle information um, about the service principle you created uh, with help of the OpenShift documentation. Then I'm searching for a good location to deploy my cluster. Um, where is uh, Switzerland? I like Switzerland, it's rather fast. But here it is. So now um, the installer already is connected to Azure. You see it because uh, it finds our DNS zone uh, for our playground environment. I select it, gives the cluster a name. Full secret is, uh, I think, uh, uh, optional. Press enter. That's it. And there is uh, install config YAML, which was created by the installer. 
and yeah, here is uh, everything I entered. Um, and uh, the credentials are stored in the home directory in a hidden uh, directory called uh, Azure. There are the credentials, uh, they are not in the installer YAML. Now I can create a cluster. I hope I did not forget anything. Always brutal if you uh, see that you forget something in the very start. Um, if you already have all VMs spawned, that's very sad always. I hope I didn't forget anything. Now the infrastructure gets uh, created by the installer in Azure. What you see here is uh, I forgot uh, to switch off my debug um, code. Um, yeah, I have, as I told, I have uh, this hack which uh, creates a helper VM and now Terraform, uh, which is a part of the installer. Uh, creates a few resources and also starts with this helper VM. Go to Azure, can wait until uh, here some uh, C4 OKD4. Resource group will pop up. It always takes a while. That does not mean that uh, the installer is doing nothing. The Azure UI always uh, takes a few seconds or sometimes minutes until it shows uh, resources which were already created. So we can see that there are some older uh, tries of uh, creating OKD4 cluster. Let's remember this uh, two and we, and uh, in a few seconds, uh, there should pop up a new entry. So maybe I can go further. Yeah, um, what I normally do if uh, things go wrong, at this uh, stage it happens uh, for Azure deployment uh, from time to time. Um, yeah, these are the typical commands um, which will sometimes save your life. Um, you should, you could enter at first uh, if the uh, master VMs don't come come up who are still um, for a long time in creating date, then you should enter the uh, bootstrap PM. The username is always core. The uh, uh, public key uh, is the one you have created before with SSH Keegan. Then the first thing what I do is uh, to c do a curl on Google and uh, to check if I have an internet connection. As this was a problem in the in earlier versions of Fedora CoS that I got no answer with this command. And it was obvious that I have no internet connection after a reboot, curl uh, Google worked always. Next uh, thing I do is that I do a pseudo Portman images to check if, uh, the, uh, if Fedora CoS downloads something from the internet. Um, after there are four or five images Downloaded normally, uh, the bootstrap or every every VM restarts. I think it's uh, because uh, there are some in the images are some tools which are downloaded and written to uh, to the uh, Fedora Core OS partition. And after reboots, these uh, tools are permanently uh, inside of the Fedora Core OS VM. Uh, also, cry control is not uh, in the VM from the beginning. It needs a reboot, and after that, it's it's in the system. With this command, sudo journal control, uh, no pager follow, you can see all uh, logs, all system logs. Um, and here, if you have containers which make problems, you can um, have a look in the in the uh, logs. I forgot the command uh, which shows the running containers. It's cry control ps. Uh, uh, dash A. Um, so you can see the container it is. If it takes forever uh, until the control plane comes up, um, then you uh, have a few options. The bootstrap VM has already a public IP. The uh, master VMs, I 
uh, are behind a load balancer. So if you want to uh, go into a, a master VM or a worker VM, you have to give them a public IP and also enable port 22 in the network security group. Um, that also a point where I think it, uh, debugging could be improved if, if the private key for debugging purposes would be in the bootstrap VM because all VMs are in the same private network. It would be nice if I could jump to each VM, masters and workers uh, from the bootstrap VM, but currently um, that's not possible. Maybe it already changed. I have not tried it uh, since the uh, last days, but normally private key is not in, inside of the bootstrap VM, which makes sense for security reasons, but for debugging it's so nice. So if uh, the next step we can see with OC get CSR, if there are some, uh, if our, all masters are all, uh, already approved, and this is, uh, yeah, the situation where control plane should uh, should be there and you could should see something with OC get uh, get pods you should see that a uh, lots of containers are creating if uh, there after re reasonable time are only are not three masters then you have are lost I don't know how to recover that I always destroy and recreate the cluster in this case I, I hope that it doesn't uh, happen now uh, during the, the installation, which occurs in parallel. That's a good, uh, good time to switch over. Let's see if there is a third. Yes, we have a third uh, resource group in the Azure portal. I changed to it. Ready, lots of resources created. Okay, we have only one virtual machine. Let's let's have a look. Okay, it's still running. We have one virtual machine. Uh, this is this helper VM uh, I was talking about. Uh, we have a storage account. Ah, the VM image is already created. It means at this point I could delete the helper VM. It's not automatically de deleted. I saved uh, this work. Well, I don't want to see that to show you the storage account. Yeah, here is this. Here is our uploaded uh, um, Fedora Chorus VHD file with the uh, type hblob in the in the proper size. And if you have an image created, it's a very good signal. Uh, it means that the format of the VHD file is uh, is correct. Because if it's not, uh, the, has not the correct format, you can create this image. Azure will complain about that. So let's refresh. Yo, yeah. Um, we have, yeah, <laughs> we have uh, Bootstrap VM and three masters at this moment. What I normally do in this phase is to go to the Bootstrap VM. It's still creating. And I love the serial console, um, where you can see if it, if it's running, uh, what, uh, VM does. Currently it's still creating, yes, complaints. I have to wait a little bit. The master VMs should also be in creating state. Maybe we have one which is a little bit faster than the others because then, uh, you, could see that ignition is waiting for its configuration. Now we have to wait a little bit. That's normal. Short. VM creation always takes a little bit. What is important? Uh, you should not use this uh, URL to to SSH into it because this is the IP address of the load balancer. Go into networking and take this IP address. This is the IP address of the virtual machine. 
we also see that uh, the Bootstrap VM already has port 22, the SSH port opened. Takes its time. Okay, now I tried again to go into the serial console. This time the uh, Bootstrap VM has uh, started. And uh, go back and forth to show you that. So that's how it looks like um, is if the VM has started. You see here somewhere between the, the boot locks um, is the ignition code starting up. And here you will see Hi, I'm Fedora CoreOS. I have this IP address. Um, this is a private IP address here in Azure. And yeah, now we can, um, I will show you how to go into the VM. I was falling out of my uh, VM here. I will enter my Ubuntu VM again. Um, I will SSH into the Bootstrap VM. A Bootstrap VM, I get its uh, IP address. This one. Okay. So this is the point if you forgot to create uh, a SSH e pair that the VM won't let you in. I'm already inside, but yeah. Uh, what I saw, I don't know if it is severe or not. Normally it isn't that I have sometimes failed units here um, of services which uh, didn't came up. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I talk too much. Uh, this is uh, the situation here where um, the Bootstrap VM restarts. I, I said it before, it installs a few tools uh, from the uh, images it downloaded from the internet. It extracts the tools and puts it uh, to uh, the uh, to a second partition. I think it's a way RPM OS, OS3 works, reboots, and then you have the tools inside of CVM. You have to wait for the restart. Completely normal, nothing special about it. Good sign if uh, CVM reboots. That's only a, a little check. See if it pulls images, this list will grow um, to yeah, grow a lot. Yeah, you see, you can you can watch how it grows. There are lots of images. Then this is the command. Here you can say that you want to see a cubelet. Oops. Yeah, nothing special. And uh, Something should also work. A favorite command here. It looks good. Because the API server already is answering. As far as I understood, the bootstrap uh, VM um, starts a fake, a fake uh, control plane, and all the masters um, get their ignition configs from the Bootstrap VM. They get, uh, yeah, they install themselves with software, reboot, and uh, join the cluster. And if there are three uh, master VMs, uh, 
if they have joined the cluster, then the Bootstrap VM stops, uh, stops working and uh, gets deleted. And that's the point where Kubernetes is running. Um, the installation finalizes. The machine API operator starts um, uh, new worker VMs. And uh, then you are already almost finished. So I love this a moment. <laughs> lots, uh, uh, lots of pods are spawning. A few seconds. At first, they are in pending. Normal takes a little bit. And the next thing I do is that I. I don't want to disturb. I have to as, uh, do something in the cloud shell. If I do not, I will. Uh, it will uh, close. Is that I will check the duplicate uh, signing requests. There are no. A little bit. Uh, yes. Prepare this view for the workers. But yeah, this uh, you will uh, have this view with the pending pods um, as long as uh, the three masters are have joined the cluster. So uh, be prepared that this can last a little bit. Was I? Not see any CSRs. This, uh, no worries about, uh, these, uh, errors, which are warnings. The Terraform, uh, feature. It tells me that, uh, there are some, uh, resources are deprecated. There is a, a, already a version two of the Azure provider for Terraform. We already tried it out. Looks, looks very promising. And this uh, information tells me that something gets deprecated. It's not a not a real error. Yeah, the installer says uh, API is up. It's waiting for a bootstrap to complete. That's ah okay. Here our CSRs uh, come to life. It is always for me. It's uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't know the insights of OKD very good, but this uh, is for me the first indication that something tries to attend the cluster. It's a good signal because it means that all uh, master VMs um, yeah, came up, which would also be visible now in OC get nodes. Yeah, it is. True. Wait, yeah, they are not ready. That's okay. I hope I don't uh, get you sick um, through my switching here. Ah, okay. Now comes the moment. I, I love it. If everything here is in container creating. Yeah, short before that. If this uh, counter goes up to five, then on the upper side, ports will explode. I was wondering uh, on the last try. I don't did not see any uh, OpenShift on Zool uh, operator. Don't know where it where it is. If it comes later or because in the last try one of the workers didn't come up. I uh, I was thinking that this is a problem. Maybe that the OpenShift uh, console operator is not present but i'm not sure yeah now it's exploding you see that isn't that cool yes come up um console operator still not there if uh yeah if uh you want to see how uh some some information about the health of the cluster operators you can do this uh, oops, okay. Ah, oh, no, okay. Mm, cool. 
Now you see a list of operators, uh, if they are available, if they are progressing, or if they are degraded. Um, don't be worried if during the installation operators get uh, degraded. Normally, they uh, repair uh, themselves. Um, sometimes I think there are dependencies uh, between operators. So, uh, yeah, uh, don't get confused if there is a degraded uh, status set to true. What um, concerns me more is that there is still no solo operator. I don't know what I missed here. Yeah, maybe it comes. So now I will check if uh, machine API are present. Yes, this is true. Uh, this means, um, okay, this is very young. This means uh, that um, the machine API controller um, will uh, create your workers. Um, they should appear in the portal. Because the port was so young. It's a little bit. If uh, if uh, the OC cl uh, CLI blocks or does what it, yeah, or sends you this uh, message, don't be concerned. Uh, it can be that this is a situation where um, the uh, load balancer uh, kicks the bootstrap VM out of the cluster, and it, uh, sometimes this is a result of that. Normally, nodes should be ready, yeah. I, I think it, this was at the time where the bootstrap VM left us, um, sometimes also see API pods um, restart, then um, you get strange messages, but don't be concerned about that. It's uh, at least, at least in my experience, it's normal. Okay. Check again if the workers come up. Here they are. So and now there is a little bit tension because uh, it's not clear if they all get in running state, and if they are in running state, it's not clear if uh, they will join the cluster ever. Uh, as you, as I said um, a few days ago, it worked, but but I'm not sure if I had luck or not. Wait a little bit. Yeah, they're all creating. Creating? does not always mean that uh, the VM is not running yet. Cre creating can mean that um, ignition is uh, waiting for a configuration. Yeah, um, only if ignition has completed its configuration, that's a point where the VM goes into running state. If ignition waits for its configuration file, because also the workers, need a configuration file, which is served this time from the control plane, from the masters, uh, through a service uh, which uh, which name is uh, machine config daemon, I think. Um, it, and uh, yeah, as soon as they get this configuration, they will configure themselves and they are in running state. Maybe we have a chance, no, we have no chance to see here something in the serial console because Azure needs Boot diagnostics to be enabled. Maybe for debugging, it's also a good idea if I could configure that. Yeah, because masters, in the masters, uh, on the bootstrap node, it's enabled. On the workers, it's not enabled for some reason. So I enable it. Only to be able to, see. oh my god, which one? I think. We'll see. Um, okay, it's a wrong one. Try again. If it not works, it's not, it's not bad. Okay. Bad luck. Let's see if they are running. Yeah, the first one is running. Second one. Oh, I'm crossing my fingers. Okay, we have two running VMs. 
Okay. Give it a little bit of time. Ah, my God. Forgot to... I don't understand why I can't uh, set the timeout of the Azure Cloud Shell. It would be such a nice feature. To not get thrown out every time. We can ask the Azure folks for that. Yeah, I hope they see that. They are very helpful guys. Uh, love the Azure Azure team. We are back. Um, only masters but maybe we have a few workers don't see them wait for them takes a little bit have a look on this one oh running yes Diane all three are running man maybe, maybe it works maybe. yeah but this is not <laughs> Um, this is uh, not the normal situation uh, I experienced um, since I use the fixed uh, uh, Fedora Core as uh, PM image. Um, there is something, something is uh, still inside uh, some effect. Of course, uh, if they are running, as I explained, it doesn't mean that also something happens in, inside of CVM. Okay. Yeah, yes. Nice. So we have, this is also, I will make a, a, a pause. Um, yeah, they can cut it out. It's, we have to wait until the workers come. Okay. Okay. Here was something. Ah, okay. This is always, this always comes before, uh, something joins the cluster. There is always this node, uh, node, <laughs> node, uh, bootstrapper. And here we have a worker VM. First one. Yeah, um, a few words about that. If you do, if you are uh, watching how much pods are running, you will see that there are lots of pending pods. Yeah, uh, at some times there are lots of pending pods because some, um, Pods have uh, uh, node constraints, node selectors on them that they only allowed are allowed to run on certain uh, nodes, and that's a point uh, when they get uh, started. Yeah, uh, if the workers come come up, I still see no uh, no. I don't see uh, OpenShift console. I'm a little bit uh, concerned. Don't know why. Yeah, maybe it comes later. Don't know. Mm -hmm. Ah, the second worker has attended the cluster. Little bit a hiccup in the API server. Should be running. Oh, here it is. Okay. Little bit. The first worker is ready. The second one getting ready. The third one, I hope that we see it soon. Yes. Ooh, full strike. Okay. Um, yeah, we have three workers. Sure. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, that's nice. Um, but I'm worried about the OpenShift console. I don't understand. That's completely new. Uh, I think the last time I installed it, it was uh, there from the beginning. Of the setup, I saw the operator. I don't know where it is. 
Uh, it's not there. Maybe it comes if all workers are set up, but it's a little bit strange because all other operators um, were were there um, from the beginning. Okay, let's wait. Then. Oh, I love this picture. All workers are here. Masters are ready. Christian and Diane, I love presentations that work. Yeah, and have a result. I have a strong feeling that this presentation will have a running uh, web UI at the end. No, it's not here. <laughs> it's missing. Oh my god. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe it's missing from the release payload somehow. Um, that would be super <laughs> weird, but um, I mean, it should be in that view as well. It's yeah, the operator is missing. I think that's a that's a point. Yeah, can I can yeah, I check I that so. somehow? I mean the um yeah, it looks like the namespace doesn't even exist, right? So no, I'm not it's sure. Not here. Um yeah, I don't have a quick everything fix. else. Okay, um but but I'm I'm prepared. Yeah, uh, I have a running cluster here. I would um I would say I make a little pause. Ah, okay, I don't have a route, but uh I can get the route with uh this command. Need the open shift console namespace for that. And this is the raw, the, uh, the name of the URL uh, where you can, uh, yeah, open the uh, web UI of OKD with, um, and, uh, I have, uh, prepared a login because, uh, yes, there is a problem with the installation. Um, I switched to a, to a former installation of OKD. And I entered the console URL and I'm asked for a first time login, uh, username and password. The username is cube admin. The password was, uh, generated by, uh, the installer at the very beginning of the installation process. Uh, it's, uh, here in OS in the file cube. Admin password. Take that and copy paste it in my web console. Yes, and I'm in. So this is the web console of OKD. Um, yeah, we see here there is a one degraded operator. It's I think it's the OpenShift sample operator. Uh, and Christian, Christian uh, told me that there is already a fix in preparation for that. Um, and yeah, normally everything is green. Um, maybe there are, uh, if you update or upgrade the cluster with, with this OC, uh, ADM upgrade command, I'll try to find it. In Slack, yes. um, some of this should do the job. There's something with warning. If you upgrade a running cluster with this command here, I think it's also in the documentation, then it can be currently in the beta um, that you get a degraded uh, operators. But I think, yeah, as I explained before, it's in this phase of uh, of the project where upgrades are, yeah, uh, where they began, the team began to start a test upgrades. It's normal that things sometimes get degraded. Um, and yeah, that's it for the installation process. 
Um, I would switch back to the presentation. I have a few slides left. Um, yes, but I'm happy to uh, to get it running uh, on Azure. Yeah, it works good. I also tried, um, I prepared something in advance. I tried us out storage. Where is my storage? Storage classes manage premium. It's Azure Disk, the default storage. Mm. Lots of Kubernetes distributions. And I think I have some storage test. PVC, yeah, here's my PVC test. I created a PVC assistant volume claim and it is bound. It created a, a persistent volume. There's something special. I don't understand if it is uh, a wanted feature that if you create a PVC that it will only bind to a persistent volume if it is used. So I had to create, finalize a test. I had to create a port which is using this PVC. Up. And uh, where is it? Volume mount volume. Yes, that's the name. Joseph test is the name of my PVC. And as soon as I start this pod, which is mounting this uh, persistent volume, uh, this PVC, the persistent volume was created. And also see that, to change the resource group for that, I see that uh, here in the Azure portal, this is my Azure disk. The size was one gigabyte. Also here, the requested size was a gigabyte. And here you see that we have a disk with a gigabyte premium SSD for sure. I hope I can change that because this is the most expensive uh, disk on Azure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's not so, not so smart to, to have the most expensive disk as a default storage class, but it's a detail. Okay. Um, I'm back. To the slides, um, I stopped here. I, I think um, on the slide, if something goes wrong, where I showed you um, typical uh, procedures you can um, do if something is goes wrong or is not as expected. On the second slide, yeah, I mentioned the effect. I stumbled uh, uh, over a few times since a few days that. Uh, even if uh, the VMs are started and have uh, are configured by ignition and have an internet connection that say uh, don't pull images from the internet. Maybe uh, my impression is I, I don't see anything in the logs. Yeah, uh, I see that uh, some uh, tubelet um, script is uh, restarting all the time. Maybe something is there is a race condition. I don't know. Um, but it seems that it does not run uh, successfully. It doesn't pull ports. And this uh, means it's, uh, yeah, this VM is dead. I don't know a procedure how to get it back to life, but I think uh, this will clarify in the next, in the next time. If uh, the masters are affected by this effect, I think you have uh, not uh, much chance, but to recreate the cluster, to delete it and to create a new one. If a worker is affected, I got it uh, working uh, one times. Uh, if I deleted the worker in the Azure portal, um, then uh, the machine uh, API operator uh, complains about that he doesn't find CVM again. Then I deleted uh, a machine custom resource. That's the name for for VMs in uh, in OKD. I deleted it and I uh, exported as a configuration from a working machine custom resource for a working VM and uh, created a new machine from that. And I did this and uh, a new worker VM was created by, by the operator and everything worked afterwards. Yeah, it's, it's some kind of workaround if you stumble over this effect. And yeah, but it, but it must be observed. I don't know if it is special for Azure, um, of course, or not. Um, just just to have it mentioned. So uh, I'll, finally, I like to recap um, what we talked about. 
Um, yes, installation of OKD4 currently is possible in Azure. Even it takes sometimes a few attempts, yeah, um, but things get smoother and smoother. It's, uh, um, yeah, I see uh, in in the future very optimistic. Uh, um, yeah, I think I think it's uh, nothing is uh, unsolvable, unsolvable, <laughs> unsolvable here. Sorry, um, my hack. I'm, I implement it is not necessary anymore if um, the Fedora Core S image is available on the Azure Marketplace. Um, but I would it would be I would be sad if uh, people have to wait until that because um, I asked in the community when it will be available, and um, the answer was that they can't give a, a, yeah a schedule about that. But uh, yeah, so surprised us a lot in the in the last months um, that can get very fast. Um, sometimes there still are effects during the installation uh, that must be observed. OKD, if it is installed, it seems to run stable. And yeah, for sure, it's a lot of fun to work with OKD. I love it a lot. I, I can really say, and my, my team also always loves about me that I'm so a fanboy about uh, the software, but uh, yeah, it's so carefully crafted piece of software. I love it. And uh, yeah, hail to Red Hat and the community for that. Thanks to Vadim, Christian, Dusty, and many others for your support. I'm always asking lots of questions in Slack and in my tickets. Sometimes my tickets are not real problems, but based on inexperience from my side. But um, yeah, people are always friendly and help uh, if they can. That's very nice. N very nice community. I love it. Yeah, here is a, a page. Uh, I try to put lots of stuff on that because I was asked by the Yen if something could be improved. And um, I asked the team and I got a few answers. Not only for the Azure installation, it's uh, the least uh, on this list. Yeah, let's start. Um, Fedora Core is for sure should get on the Azure Marketplace so that uh, no hacks are necessary anymore. Biggest pain point in OKD3 was that uh, we use image scanners, uh, which are reporting uh, vulnerabilities also on uh, uh, containers which are running. Uh, this software looks for images where, are, where there are running containers. And um, because the images for OKD3 were rather old sometimes, um, we got lots of uh, problem reports and we had uh, to patch the OKD images on our own because um, yeah, there were sometimes no newer ones. And this procedure is very, very bad for us because uh, nobody endures in this moment that uh, the images or the containers based on these images uh, run properly. Uh, I, if it's possible, I don't know if it's possible, uh, it would be great to have uh, OKD4 images which are rebuilt regularly, not only if they are code commits. I understand that everything is driven by a commit to a GitHub, but uh, in the case that a image is uh, has no updates, yeah, it would get no uh, it's, 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 there would be no new image for that, where you could do could do a yum update, yeah, um, which ensures that you get uh, hot fixes at least, yeah, which lands into the image. Um, it would be absolutely great if there would be updated images. This would a big advantage over OKD3, where we suffered a lot in the last months uh, on yeah this. Uh, Customly patched images. Yeah, uh, cluster FS was the next uh, next point. It was very unstable in in OKD3. We removed it from the cluster. But as far as I understand, OKD4 is a completely new storage uh, solution which is proposed. I think it's based on Ceph and Rook. It's very nice. Um, yeah, then we have one uh, LDAP sync creates a lot of traffic on our Active Directory servers in uh, OKD3 because we have nested group uh, queries 
and uh, the colleagues asked me uh, to tell, uh, yeah, to tell that maybe it's uh, there are best, better caching algorithms for users and groups to reduce the load on uh, Active Directory servers. Um, maybe maybe there's something we we don't know about OKD4 already uh, uh, available. Um, the logging stack um, in OKD3 was was rather old. The Elasticsearch uh, was, I think it's version 5. Currently we have, I think, Elastic uh, 7 or 8. Um, don't understand why there is no newer version. Maybe because it's decoupled from OKD. That would be okay. Uh, currently it's not possible, by the way, to install logging stack because uh, in the documentation there is um, a section about how you can install it. Uh, as far as I remember, it should be taken out of the operator hub, but there is no uh, logging solution in, currently in the operator hub. It seems as if it is, uh, was filtered out during uh, the, uh, the procedure as uh, the, only the community operators um, got uh, yeah, filtered out for OKT. Formerly there were also uh, Red Hat um, uh, projects. Um, present and now they are not anymore present. Next point, um, documentation about OpenShift for OKD's internal architecture would be nice. Um, as I understand that um, it's planned after um, OKD is uh, GA, that uh, the community is asked to work uh, intensely um, on OKD um, that's a point where it's absolutely necessary, in my opinion, to have uh, more um, architecture uh, docs about, let's say, purpose of operators, diagrams, how uh, things play together. But I, I think it's it's uh, nothing new. Yeah, it will come, I'm absolutely sure. But it's also necessary if you want to have the community uh, with you um, in the development. More debugging features would be nice. Uh, during my presentation, I, I uh, mentioned a few one. Um, maybe it's possible to have private keys for masters and workers in the Bootstrap VM. So if things go wrong, that I don't have to get them a public IP first manually because it's uh, yeah that's uh, if you do that over and over, it's uh, uh, you can waste your time with that. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for the moment. Uh, what uh, we would like to be improved in OKD. Here is uh, my last slide. Uh, some links about valuable information sources. The most important uh, information source, in my opinion, where I got the most feedback for development is the Slack channel OpenShift-Dev in the Kubernetes workspace. Uh, there is a situation that, yeah, I ask something and normally it takes a few minutes and someone answers. Even my colleagues, uh, which uh, they always open the GitHub issues and were wondering uh, sometimes, because there is no response, as his colleagues were absolutely amazed about the response times on Slack. Yeah, so this is where uh, the great community shows its power. Uh, because you always get valuable information there and there is always a nice atmosphere this, in this chat. Um, yeah, then we have the OKD, OpenShift OKD um, link uh, here. You should uh, put your issues inside here, not in OpenShift installer or the other um, uh, repositories because, um, yeah, if things Maybe uh, come the problems come from misunderstanding uh, OKD. It can be solved here, and we don't bother um, the, the developers about that. So please open your issues here. Then we have the origin release uh, page, uh, where all uh, new releases are announced, and you see a very cool change log. It's I love the presentation on this page. It's so completely different uh, to what we are used to in former versions. It's absolutely great. I can 
absolutely encourage you to uh, visit this page. I love it. Yeah, I could I could watch it all the night. Yeah, because there's yeah, <laughs> it's uh it's cool. So we have uh, next we have the OKD working group page. Um, there you have uh, information about the OKD working groups. It hap it occurs uh, bi weekly. And normally on, I think, uh, uh, Tuesday evening in German time. There is also a, a calendar for that. You can uh, follow this link and you will get the uh, entry in your, in your calendar. Uh, automatically, we have the OpenShift documentation. Uh, a few days ago, also the uh, OKD uh, preview documentation got released. Uh, so uh, you also should visit it, and if you have uh, corrections, if you find some errors, you can. I, I missed. Uh, sorry, I forgot the link. There is also a repository under OpenShift, uh, OpenShift dash docs. I think you can open a pull request for for your documentation box there. Uh, don't forget to put uh, the uh, to put the OKD in the uh, between brackets in the title so uh, the documentation people can filter out what's uh, special for what has to be separated from OpenShift or OKD. And the last one, uh, they, there are two uh, repos um, where currently in this phase uh, the most differences between OpenShift and OKD uh, are uh, as far as understood uh, this is the OpenShift installer and the OpenShift machine config operator. These two uh, projects um, have a heavy uh, dependency on Fedora Core OS or Red Hat uh, Core OS, and that's uh, why uh, the OKT guys are mostly working there. Um, if they do something special for, especially for OKD. Yes, this is the end of my presentation about how to install OKD 4.4 on Azure. Thanks for your attention. I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, and uh, yes, um, maybe we see each other in, in Slack channel. I would I would love to see you there. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Joseph, for taking the time to do this. Um, it, <laughs> You're welcome. It, it, you know, there's always something that goes wrong. I'm very curious to figure out what it is about the um, console operator that didn't work, but um, I don't have any tips or tricks for figuring that one out. And <laughs> yes, that's, that's a, that was a stress test.